today we are continuing our decluttering series. Ellen Dudley, Ellen Dudley Real Estate is sponsoring our downsizing series. And today we are, our topic is decluttering. We have our guest speaker today, Eve Ward. She is from Bond and DeVoe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I'm very excited. Personally, I know that I um, can learn a lot from someone who can tell us how to uh, get rid of certain things, keep things, and maybe not as extreme, Eve, as the Marie Kondo effect of, of like, or thanking everything and getting rid of half of your life. Um, <laughs> but I know that as we get older, we inherit things. I inherited things from my parents and, and my in-laws. And so picture frames are in one of my kids' rooms and, you know, vases and just more and more clutter. So I'm really looking forward to it. So first I'm going to introduce Ellen Dudley. She's sponsoring our series. We want to thank her and she will introduce Eve and then we'll get started with our program. And uh, Eve's, Eve's contact information is in the chat and there'll be plenty of time um, um, after, after her presentation for people to ask questions. If you can't use the chat, um, we'll look for hands raised or you can just jump in. So let's get started. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Hi, everybody. I'm Ellen Dudley. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. And I'm so pleased to be sponsoring this downsizing series for seniors. And um, if anybody has the wherewithal to put on their cameras, we'd love to see your beautiful faces. But if not, that's okay. Um, I'd like to introduce Eve Ward. Eve founded Bond and DeVoe to offer clients a decluttering, relocation, and moving service that's dedicated to helping clients and their families be more comfortable in their homes by going beyond the logistics of organizing. So I'm just going to toss it right to Eve because I know she's got a lot of information. So thank you again for being here. And if you have any questions at the end, there will be time for Q&A. And if you have any questions for me about the value of your home, if you choose to downsize, I'm always here to help. Thank you so much. Welcome, Eve. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Ellen. I really appreciate that kind introduction. And thank you for tr uh, Tracy. I think this is a very valuable, um, uh, you know, experience for us all. And please, for anybody, if I do speak uh, too quickly, please, I have broad shoulders, please ask me to slow down or to explain something, I will happily do that. So um, I will start by introducing myself very briefly. My name is Eve Ward. Um, I moved here to the wonderful uh, state of Massachusetts from Hong Kong. Uh, and before that, I uh, lived in uh, India and before that, London. So I have plenty of experience about moving and uh, decluttering and downsizing. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen very uh, quickly. Uh, there we go. So, so here at Bond and DeVoe, first of all, where the name comes from, Bond Street, I live very close to Bond Street in London and very close to DeVoe Road in, um, in Hong Kong. I actually used to work at Fidelity Investments. That's where, before I moved to the US, I worked at Fidelity uh, Investments for 17 years um, as the head of risk management in Asia. So. Um, I'm quite risk adverse, so which seems to be definitely a benefit when downsizing and decluttering. So I'm going to move on to decluttering tips. And the first thing I would like all of you to consider, because decluttering is a very personal experience, and it is an experience. It's an experience, and it's an adventure, but I'd really like you to think about what is, the, what is the emotion that comes up when you think about decluttering? Do you find the thought of it overwhelming? Does it excite you? How do you really think about it when, what does decluttering mean to you? And, and I don't know how, I saw some of you with notepads, but I'd really like you just to write that down. What is that first emotion that comes to your mind when you think about decluttering? And now what I'd like you to do is imagine a space in your home 
and what that would look like if it was in fact decluttered would it how would that what would that feel like to you imagine that space now some of you will be imagining an attic some of you a basement some of you it will be the room you haven't walked into in so long because it just you can't exhale just like a deep inhale <laughs> and then you need to figure out how to let that out so one of the things we need to do is imagine what that will look like and what that will feel like and I instead of thinking about the attic instead of thinking about the basement I just would like you to think about a drawer just a drawer or a cupboard in your home that when you open it you're like Okay, I'll just quickly close that again. It might have a parking ticket in there from 1983. You know, it might have all sorts of memories. And then you pick up that parking ticket and you remember exactly when you got that ticket and what you were doing on that day. <laughs> but I really want you just to think about one area because even if you're excited or even if you're overwhelmed, we tend to think about things from a very sort of, macro level, a very big level, as opposed to thinking, okay, I'm just going to think about that draw for a minute and what that would look like. And I'm gonna just tackle that. So once you imagine that one space and let's start with that drawer or that cupboard, you need to make a commitment. And that commitment is to yourself. And, and a lot of this sounds elementary, there are a lot of things in life are quite elementary as well, but you need to make a commitment and say it out loud. I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to really enjoy uh, organizing that draw. It might take you a few days, might take you minutes, hours. We're all very different, but really think about that one space that's going to look fabulous and calm and then make a space. So make a commitment, say, okay, depending on your personality, we all have very different personalities. So I think about my spouse and I think when they're organizing something, I'm never going to distract them because I know when they're actually doing something, they're going to just continue doing it. Other people, I, they need a time and a date to make that commitment. So you might say, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 16th at 2 p.m., I'm going to clear out my drawer. It's in my calendar and that's how I work. I'm looking forward to it. I'm building up that sort of time. I'm gonna put it in my calendar and that's when it's gonna happen. So let's go to that drawer. We open it, we look at it. We've looked at it a few times over the years. Where possible, always touch things once. It's a little bit like emails. How many times do we click on emails? Just touch something once. So if I pick up an old water bottle, this one's not old, but if I pick up an old water bottle and I look at it and I can read all the books on Amazon, there's a hundred books. I'm more of a, let's just get on and do it, right? Let's just do this. We're all adults. We all know what happens when we look at something. Now, I might not have used this water bottle since 1979, but you know, in 1979, I loved this water bottle. It was before it was trendy. This water bottle has so many great menu memories. Brilliant. Am I gonna use this water bottle again? No. Do I like to look at it? Yeah, maybe. Take a photo, it's wonderful. We have just been through um, a home and uh, we've taken lots of photos of things that, they, that the client likes to look at and they are their screensavers right now. So they can look at that water bottle anytime they like and more often. And they think about that one summer in 1979 that was fabulous, but they don't need the actual water bottle anymore. It's as we would say in the UK, neither use nor ornament. So that water bottle moves to one side. So you check your progress, but we also want to label. We want to be very clear. What's going to go in the bin? So you, your trash. What are we going to keep? What are we going to donate? And what are we going to sell? Well, we know we can't really sell a water bottle. I'm not sure anybody is going to want a water bottle from 1979. 
no, we can't really donate it because I don't even think anybody would, you know, we're not going to sell it, donate it. We've decided if we love it enough, we'll take a photo. So it's time to recycle or it's time to bin. So labeling your boxes is a very good idea. So you might just have four U-Haul boxes, four plastic boxes, four boxes you repurpose, and then the water bottle pop goes into the bin, into the trash. We can say bin because I'm British, but we pop it into the trash. And the one thing that I always say is, and one of the books I love so much is uh, The Power of Now. We live in the present. So we might say, dear 1979, what a great year that was. Loved it. This water bottle and me, we had a fabulous time. But thank you for the lessons, but this is where we live right now. And it goes into the box. So we're thinking about the present, we're thinking about the future, and we're thinking about how we feel in a decluttered home. And I think one of the things that I would say is around needing help. And we're gonna go back over this list in a minute because we're, we're at the moment we're just on the draw. Needing help, know your help and know when you need it. One of the things that I mentioned to Tracy at the beginning, and one of the reasons that um, I think it's important to have a team around you when you're thinking about decluttering, and especially when you're thinking about downsizing and moving home, you need to know your team, know who's in your house helping you. So that I cannot underscore enough. If it were my parents, if it were my friends, I'd want to know who's stepping over the threshold to help them go through this. Not just because of a skill set, because, you know, we're, we're not operating on people. We're not, you know, managing uh, we're not managing money, we're, we're helping somebody downsize. This is an adult to adult conversation around what you have in your home and what you need in your home. So it's really, really important that you take control regardless of how overwhelmed you feel. So there's a lot of pre-work that you would do because I would be very remiss if I said, I tell you what, hire me and I'll do it all for you. That's, that's not fair and it's not right. There's a lot of work that you can do that's easy work up front and draw some parameters with whoever you're allowing into your home and into your life to help you with this. So I think it's important that you know when you need help. I think it's important to speak to somebody like Tracy or speak to your realtor or understand what help it is you need if you're downsizing. Is it because you feel overwhelmed? And if you do, do feel overwhelmed, we go back to the beginning and imagine a space. If you feel overwhelmed, are you really committed to doing this? Are you making sure you have the right breaks? Are you checking in with yourself and making sure that you have the right labels? And are you having the right conversation? Do you have friends that can help you? And I know it's so hard during this this period of time, but you know, it can actually be quite fun as well. We've actually um, had some clients where we've been on Zoom and we've been like holding up the water bottle and like, okay, which bin is it going to go in? You can make this as light as you like. I feel like when there are so many books written, is it really to the benefit of somebody? Because there's so many different personalities. Like, the Maria Kondo, it was a great series, but in reality, we're just human beings that just want to let some things go to move on. So I think that we really, you need to know how you work best in this environment. Do you get energy from other people? If your friend says, get rid of that water bottle, are you somebody that listens to other people or are you just going to take offense and say, I love that water bottle? You need to know how you work. And I say this, not just when it comes to decluttering, I say this when you let anyone in your house. And I'll just interject that into this piece because we move people as well and we settle people in. And all too often, people come into your home. If you want a plumber and you're saying, my tap is dripping, please just make it. You still want to know who that plumber is. You want to know as much as you can about the work they're doing. This is your home and the 
same is with decluttering. You want to make sure that you get a recommendation from your realtor. You want to make sure that you can get references from somebody that they've done this in the past to help you. But most of all, you never want to say to anyone, just make it happen unless they're running your money, unless they're operating on you, or unless you're selling your house. If not, most other things we can control a little bit. So you have to know that piece first. What is it that I want done? In terms of donating, so no, I cannot underscore this enough. Do the homework yourself before you bring anybody else in. And you might actually enjoy it so much, you may never need to bring anybody else in. One thing I would say is start this process as early as possible. If you're thinking about selling your home, you don't want to be doing this three weeks out because it really can be very challenging if you have a full uh, attic, if you have a full basement, if you have family and you know you think about whether you're going to pass this on to your family members you want to give them time because otherwise if you say hey Johnny would you like this picture frame and Johnny's like do you know how much work I've got on at the moment mom I don't even have time to think about the picture frame you're like okay Johnny <laughs> I'll come back to you but by that time you want to move you want to see that you're moving things forward so when I say about the labeling, if you there are subsets of this, you've got your trash, you want items that you'll keep. And when I mean keep, I don't mean that, okay, me, Eve, I want all of these items, these items that I want in my family. Um, so it might be that I'm gonna give the, the pitch frames to little Johnny who's too busy, but one day he's gonna get them and I might just mail them to him. Um, you're going to, donate items, and you're going to sell items. So the homework you can do is know what's trash, and if it's trash and it's shredding, because a lot of people have a lot of legal documents, so you need to understand your tax documents, how long you need to keep certain documents. And you can, depending on how much shredding you have, you can simply drive down uh, to um, Staples, or you can have a shredding company pick those items up. And uh, so you can put all paper items in one box and have it clearly labeled. And then if you're going to keep items, you can subset them into who's going to have those items. I feel like the positioning of when you're giving items to family is very important. So if my parents call me and say, Eve, I, I've got this lovely um, dining uh, china set. I would love for you to have it. It's very different than when they say to me, Eve, would you love this lovely uh, dining set? <laughs> like mm, the positioning of something, if it, but don't say it if you don't mean it. If, you re if it would really mean a lot for you, for your, your family to have certain items, let them know. That's really, so think about what you really want your family to have and why. And if it helps, write them a letter because no kid really wants to offend their parents, but they also are living in a different generation now where we, are, we don't have as many items. So I think if you just, and we, sometimes we don't always say what we mean, but I think it's if you say, I'd really like you to have this dining set, you know, we were gifted this as part of whatever, or we had it as a wedding gift, let people know the connection that you would like them to keep and write it down in a letter um, or an email. Um, but just to simply say, we're downsizing and we wanted to know if you'd like this dining set. Well, then that can be, no, thank you. So I think it's sometimes, and this is why time is really important. And it's not a case of saying sometimes, okay, let me just make a decision here and now. We don't want to touch things twice, but we want to be thoughtful about what we're doing. And one thing that I, I'd like to say as well, we have helped many people declutter 
and we have found a lot of money, which is why it's also really important that you know who's coming into your house to help you. <laughs> so, um, and I think as well, you can point that out, you know, say, you know, can you make sure that you go through all books? Because certainly, um, I'm speaking from my own parents, I actually found um, my father's um, letters to my mother. Um, I, I found uh, letters to my mother hidden in books. So again, you know, before you donate the books, make sure, and, and when somebody's coming into your home, don't be afraid to tell them what your expectations are. So if you, if you were speaking with me and you said to me, you know, Eve, I'd like whoever's going to be helping me to make sure they go through every book because I know I have letters in there. That's really, really important. You don't want them just to pile it and send it to more than words and then somebody finds a, a letter. So I think it really, really is important that you think about the expectations that you either have of yourself or you have of anybody else that is going to help you declutter. So, so also, so think about what you're going to bin, what you're going to keep, and the letters that you are going to send family members or emails, and what you're going to donate. So, if you can think about donations, I, I saw on your website that you um, have more than words, and I think that you know, if if you're you know in a community like you are, it might be worth checking with Tracy to say, you know, under what heading, you know, I have books. Would you like them to go to more than words? And then, what rules? Do more than words have? We know that they won't just take every book you want to give them, but it's the most cost-effective way of getting books out of your home. And it might be that when you imagine a space, you start with books. It might be that you start with kitchenware. You know, the plan is your plan. And again, you don't have to do the plan on your own. You know, there are plenty of people that can help you, and it might be coming from your family, coming from your temple, coming from your realtor, coming from me. There are so many people that can help you make a plan. And if you have a ton of books, then you might say, well, I'm going to start with books. Um, and then you have, so, so to donate, you donate to clo clothing, you can donate. And there are so many in the environment that we're living in at the moment, there are so many places to donate. And you could go straight to source. And again, I'm sure this is something that Tracy can help you with in terms of the communities you have in Newton and, and the surrounding areas that may need clothes. And, you know, and so it's really understanding the community and making sure you know whether you'll get a tax receipt for that or not. And whether you want one, you know, it might be more important to you that it goes to uh, directly to a family that needs it but can't give you a tax receipt. Um, or it might be um, it, more than words do give you receipts. So that's important. And it's important to make sure you do get that receipt as well. Um, and then the most contentious item is the selling. The reality is we all think our items are worth more than to us than they are to someone else. Um, so again, think about the items you want to sell and why. Um, there are auction houses. The commissions are very high, um, normally between sort of 30 and 50 percent. But there, if it's targeted, try it out. Think about the service that you get. These are your items. They mean a lot to you. So there are companies certainly that we can recommend. And but really be careful who. And again, it's about you setting expectations getting references, um, if it's a cash business, which a lot of estate sales are cash businesses, you want to make sure that they're auditing, you know, if the, the estate sale is gonna be in your home. I'm a huge fan of Nest cameras myself, uh, and, <laughs> and I do like to have cameras uh, and in, in your home. And again, this is protecting your assets. It's making sure that people treat your home with dignity. Um, and to, so where possible, make sure that you really, really vet 
the person that's going to be selling your items. And you want to make sure that you take pictures of everything that you're going to sell beforehand. And again, that might be you, that might be a friend, that might be somebody from Temple to help you. Um, but make sure that you sell, uh, that you have photos of everything you're going to sell um, or hope to sell. And if you don't sell it, then you have a minimum price. But for certain items like um, for, for art or pieces that you know are high-end items, then there are cons consignment stores. It's just over the last year, many people have been home thinking, okay, I'm going to sell certain items. So, you know, there's a, the consignment stores are very busy right now. So again, the longer the lead time, the more time you give yourself, because you might write to your children and say, I would really like to keep this in the family. Um, if they come back and say no, well, then what's your next step? Do you have a very good, you know, you might have a, you know, a, a, somebody you know that would like it. So it gives you more steps. And don't be offended if people don't want it. I think, you know, think about some of the things your parents may have donated to you. It was a different time. It was a different time. But I think really if you, the first piece is to really think about the plan and imagine a space because this isn't supposed to be overwhelming. I feel like the more books that are written about this, the more overwhelming it becomes. We have so much time at the moment. We're at home. We have just do one box at a time. Nobody's judging you. If you do one box next week, great. It should be something that's light. It should be something that's fun. Try not to get too stuck on looking at endless photos. If you have a lot of photos, make a new box with photos written on it. You can even put the years on those boxes. So you might have photos from, I don't know, 1968 to 1978, photos from 1978 to 1988. You know, label them however you like and then go back to them. Now, you might want to have them dropped off and all put on electronically or on a snowy Sunday afternoon, you might just want to take the 68 to 78 box out, you know, make lots of cups of tea and go through them. No judgment, this is, this is your stuff. I think we've made it like cooking over the last 10 years seems to be impossible because there's so many cookery shows that all seem so overwhelming. And yet, you know, in the 1950s, we just cooked, it's just what it was. And decluttering was just, decluttering I think in the <laughs> it's just become so heavy it doesn't have to be that way but I think you know if you're selling your home I think the first thing you you know ideally before you even speak to Ellen or whoever you have wanted to do this part before you do that but the one thing I know about working with Ellen especially and we recently went through this is that she gives her clients enough time to breathe night, not saying, okay, next week, all this has to be gone. <laughs> That's not the case. We can, we can do this and we do it as a team. And I think it's really important. And I know certainly Ellen has given many of her clients big hugs and said, it's okay, just slow down. Don't let it be so overwhelming. So with that, I have 25 minutes. Wow, I can talk. Um, please, questions. I want to just jump in before the questions. I wanted to, a couple of comments. So first of all, about shredding, I just want to let people know that the Newton Senior Center, um, I believe once or twice a year has um, shredding. You just, you know, if you, if you get on the Newton Senior Center email list, they send out announcements about um, shredding and you make an appointment and you come there and there's no cost. And you just drive up and you hand them your, you know, they, you open your trunk, you take, they take out their bags or the boxes and they put it right into a dumpster or a shredder, a shredder, I mean, not a dumpster, a shredder. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, and then I also wanted to just jump in and add that you were mentioning clothing um, to donate, but people can also, I guess, bring clothing to consignment shops. Um, oh, absolutely. Again, yes. 
I think sometimes it's the path of least resistance. I feel like sometimes with the, you want to just understand what the rules are with that consignment company. If they make you have it dry cleaned, that seems like a lot. Right. And always, right. And always check the pockets. Always check the pockets before you can sign items or donate them. And I wanted to also mention, you were, you were saying that someone hid uh, letters in their um, in books. Um, when I was going through my parents' things, it was the same type of thing. I went through every envelope because my father was putting stuff in, in plastic bags in the room. I, we weren't sure what was a stop and shop circular versus like an important paper. So I also um, second that idea that really, instead of just saying to someone, um, you know, even if you hire, you know, Eve or somebody else, to come into your house or even if it's a bunch of friends to, to, to come over make sure that you know what you've got in there because sometimes people have the habit of putting money in a pocket or putting letters in books or whatever it is and there could be something hidden and that you don't want it tossed out so i wanted to um bring that up as well and um i have a third comment oh and then just one more observation and i'll open it up to questions um Years ago, I was at um, someone's bar mitzvah. They have, they have twin boys. And they hired someone to make a quilt of these boys' T-shirts from you know, their schools or sports or, or, or trips or whatever. So instead of keeping all these T-shirts or baby clothes that they grew out of, they had, it was a temple ram. It was a, it was a quilt the size of a full wall. Like you could put it on, let's say, Reisman Hall on one of the walls. It was unbelievable. So I thought that was a fabulous, brilliant idea for a lot of us who can't give, get rid of that baby blanket or that eighth grade, you know, uh, soccer t-shirt or whatever it is. So I was wondering if, if you, if you, heard about that or done that yeah we've we've definitely done that um as, as one for college it was all the college the varsity teams and all of that which uh, it was actually tufts and bc i think um that we had a client do that the other thing is that we had a chap he had his um is it scout or um uh, cubs or you know that very young he was in the, this young group and what he did is um we took photos like he was so attached to this we took we took photos of it because he had lost his parents and he just wanted to be able to see it and you know we made a whole book for him mm. things that meant a lot so he could pick it up and look at them whenever he wanted to but and again sometimes it is just starting out slowly you know and um camp that's a big one. When your kids have gone to camp or, you know, making all the sort of years and items and, and making a catalog of it, you know, so keeping not every single piece of documentation or every photo from camp, but doing it in a chronological point from all the years that they went to camp and, uh, and stories that they went to and making it more into a book. And anything is possible these days with the internet. So it really, and technology, but I, I think that Decluttering can be really as simple as going through a sock drawer. You've started your way, you know, and it can get addictive as well, really addictive. We, we certainly found that the first one, two or three drawers are the hardest. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is why having a plan and everybody loves the project plan. It doesn't matter whether you make that project plan like with yourself, Tracy, or with Ellen, you know, I would say, the, it is better to start with yourself or with Ellen before we even come in because there's a lot of work and it would be extraordinarily expensive and very remiss of me to even try and say, bring me right in at the beginning unless you just need us to start you off. All of these things you need to think through and have answers for before we come on board. And let us help you with the things that you're really stuck on and need advice on. But I think when making that initial plan, if you speak to somebody about selling your home, you might say, well, I want to sell my home next spring. And then when somebody like a friend or a family member checks in with you and say, at this point, you should be here. Have you managed to do the attic? And then, no, then you know you need help. So I think it's really knowing when you need help, not just 
oh, I have somebody do it for you. You can, If they have the right ethics, they're not going to do it for you. This, you they have to do it with you. Great. So Sean, can you put us, um, can we get this off the screen and just have yep. boxes so that um, if people want to just shout out or raise their hand, um, then they can ask questions. I think that would be the easiest. Or if I can see, if you can just raise, if somebody can raise their hand, I can look to see who's asking the question. Let's put it this way. Does anyone have a question? <laughs> Nancy in the red sweater. Just take yourself off mute. You're on mute. Okay. Raise your volume. We don't hear you. Raise, raise your volume. Sean, can you help? Is, is there anything? Sean? Sorry, who's having the issue again? Sean, Nancy Fish is having, we, we're not hearing her. Nancy, uh, turn it off, turn your, um, unmute yourself. You're on mute. And we just had it. Nancy, you just had it. If you want to re click that again. Okay. But we don't hear her. She, she muted again. Nancy, just one more time. And yes, you can put questions in the chat. Absolutely. But just for some people, it's, it's um, okay. easier just to raise your hand. Nancy, we'll get back to you. She is unmuted. She's um, unmuted. You just have to raise your volume on your speaker. Okay, Nancy, if you can type your question into the chat, I'll read it to Eve, okay? Okay. There's Hello, Marcus. Hi, Eve, I have, a, I have a quick question I'd love to touch on with you. Mm. So you touched on discussing the importance of um, the recording of items uh, for taxes and as well as for deductions, I'm assuming. Um, does that mean that all of those services along the way that you that are like, you know, pertaining to the sale of the home, including yourself, should be recorded uh, to the homeowner for that final for that final calculation? Not for tax purposes, but you raise a good point, Marcus. I, I encourage everybody that I work with and I speak with to document everything. This is a project for you. You know, think about, um, you know, and it can be in a book written down or it could be on your computer or it could be you know a family member puts it together for you i think it really is important to keep a track of um of everything that you're doing sort of financially and process wise um and just because a it shows progress but for tax purposes definitely um when you are donating items i mean i think as a, another nancy here just mess messaged um about consignment stores, um, it, it really is uh, important to get, um, looking at the question of the, the tax receipt, but sometimes you can't get a tax receipt, which is why you should be very um, enthusiastic about who you're giving it to, because you want that inner warm feeling. Great, thank you. Okay, no, thank Nancy, you. Nancy again, let's try Nancy. Can we hear you? We're still not hearing you, Nancy. Try the chat, try the chat icon on the bottom. All right, anyone else? Um, so Amy, in terms of right now, do you have a place to donate men's clothing to? Um, oh, Nancy, The Power of Now. Um, it's an old book. I just want to say it's a little bit spiritual, but you just, there's some very good messages in there. It's, it's, it really just does have you focus on, on, on now. Um, but um, men's clothing, yes, there are, is the Haley House um, based in Boston South End. Um, that's a good place to donate um, men's clothes. Um, and you said, wait until spring. If you can, don't wait. Always uh, start your research now. And, um, and please feel free to reach out to, um, to Tracy or, or to me or to Ellen about um, any recommendations. And I know, Tracy, looking at your website, you have an, you know, well, it's not an exhaustive list, but you have a very comprehensive list. <laughs> and Annette, 
Hi. Um, what about things like wall sconces? I am moving to a place where I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff. So wall sconces, curtains. Um, I'm just trying to think. There's so many things. I have a giant um, bathroom vanity, 10 feet. So in terms of anything specific like that, Annette, and what I do is we just had a client that, um, and I don't know, Deb, I know that you're on the call. We just had a client who refitted their home. They worked with an interior designer, and I think they gave it to a company, and I'll check this, Annette. Um, I think they gave it to a company called GOAT, G-O-A-T. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out, but it's, it's GOAT something, so I'll find out the name of it. It was, um, it was all like old faucets and basically they picked it because a lot of this, a lot of the, um, the cost of this is having it picked up, to be honest with you. It's unbelievable now that it's become a business. People used to, you know, drive around in carts when I was a kid, you know, saying, please bring out your whatever you need. Now people would charge you for it. So, um, so, um, I, I will check the name of that company because essentially what you would like is things to be picked up in the most cost effective manner and um, and if they can be um, repurposed as well. So Eve, I was right. going to actually ask about that for Haley House. Do they pick up? Because for a lot of uh, participants here, it's not so easy to throw the men's clothes in the car, drive into Boston, find Haley House. Do, you know, what about companies that come? I know, for example, the veterans um, they come, they come, they drive with their truck, they come up and, you know, just leave it on the front porch and give them 10 bags. So, and you know what, Tracy, that's why they do so well, because I think people have all sorts of opinions about, say, the Salvation Army or some other charities, you know, they can be quite, uh, you know, polarizing, but the veterans, every time they pick up, they're so well organized the same with more and more than words more than words have the model figured out they will pick up everything so again if it becomes too difficult to donate your items um and again schedule with the salvation army i know for sure i've had a client that had to reschedule like three times because they're just too busy so i think it's really really important that you go through this process and then if you're going to donate men's clothing you do it once if you're going to donate books you do it once um, and then also make your trash um, understand your city's pickup times of when they pick up electronics when they pick up um electronics and appliances because if you have time on your side and you have a good plan a lot of this is um not so expensive and painful it shouldn't have to be it's not a it's not an exact science you just need ellen you need me and you need tracy and between the three of us if we can't figure it out then there's something uh, very wrong <laughs> so you know a lot of this is just figuring it out so high-end jewelry um well that's uh that's uh Can I just again interject? we are having a yes. speaker in two weeks uh, as part of this series about jewelry so right. um I'll, I'll definitely have you answer quickly but we are going to have a speaker in two weeks about jewelry and just just can i interject as tracy you all know me is if for something like jewelry whoever it is be mother teresa with a company please have maybe an adult child or a girlfriend come to your house when someone is coming to look or assess your jewelry or meet somebody maybe even out of your house uh, i mean it's covid now so no one's coming to your house but like maybe go to the pub maybe go to the newton library post covid and you know find a room because you know there there are scams out there and, and you know look you know speakers are here and we hope, you know everyone's we hope everyone's honest but i think it's really really um just to protect yourself something small like jewelry just be very careful uh about that and have like i said an adult child or a girlfriend or your husband or 
partner or somebody accompany you and maybe even take the pieces out of your house and go to a public space. That's just my two cents. Eve, what do you think about what I just said? I completely agree. And I think that, again, this is about knowing who you're dealing with. You should always get that person verified. You want a reference from that person. You know, you have a fabulous resource here in Tracy. You know, you should 100% uh, do that and make sure that you know you do not commit to anything if somebody says well I'll give you I don't know five thousand dollars if you take it now nobody if anybody respects you and always act as if you know what you're talking about a friend of mine and this is what I was going to mention about Tracy you know those little um uh, little micro uh, magnifying glasses well when we worked in India whenever she went to buy jewelry she'd always take it with her because that message right there was that she knew what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what she was talking about, but you always want to give the impression you know what you're talking about and that you're no fool. And, it, and it's not that any of us are fools, but sometimes when you're going through something that's so overwhelming, you're focusing on the whole house. This person is just focusing on your jewelry. You want to know we don't always make our best decisions when we're feeling overwhelmed that is why it's so important to have a plan absolutely sherry yeah um what about i mean i have a futon some crash pads two arrow beds um you know 10 pillows and 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 part of what you know goes through my mind is um uh, you know, I don't want somebody to have to come 10 times to get all of these things. Right. So how should I think about that? So think about a staging area, Sherry. So think about, and again, this comes down to your plan. Imagine that, you know, this is the most fantastic plan you're going to have all year, it's 2021. And you take a staging area in your home, and it could be anywhere, depending on the size of your home or depending I'm, I'm on gonna the I'm going to interrupt just a second because I'm mm. actually in the process of putting my house on the market and trying mm -hmm. to get trying to get this stuff out of my house before I put it on the market. <laughs> Great. Okay. So then you want to, you're very focused, right? You want right. to do this now. So again, still have a staging area in your home, even if it's for the short term, that staging area could be in place for a week. And what you do is you put everything that you know you want picked up in one area. So, and if you, if you have enough, then you can basically, there is a, a trash pickup company that will come to your home and um, depending on how much weight, and you also want to know, again, this is all pretending we know more than we do. And you may say to that trash pickup company, I have a half a truck's worth of trash. And I see here, you're gonna charge me $150 and they may say, well, if it is really a half the truck's worth, then yes, it will be $150. And you're like, great, I'll see you on Tuesday at whatever time. But you want to make sure that you fill up that half a truck, 100%. Don't waste any of that space. If you're going to pay $150 to have something picked up, you want to make sure that you're paying $150. Terry, and use I, just all that wanted, space. I just wanted to throw in, there are Facebook websites uh, pages on Facebook where people are giving things away buy nothing Newton buy nothing Needham yeah where you can you know give someone a couch for their basement or a rug or there's there's pretty much someone for everything so before right. you go and pay a junket company I would try that route you know yeah. in your neighborhood so there's a yeah. website called next door and if you're not on it um, you could always contact me and I could just post for you. I'm happy to do that. It's I'm in the yeah. area. I, I, you know, I've looked at next door. I mean, part of my problem is um, I, uh, I'm here by myself and I'm pretty strong, but I'm not strong enough to move most of this stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, then post-it notes are the next best thing, Sherry. So you want to get a post-it note. And one of the things that we do is we sort of put pink for junk. So if you know that it's junk, some futon beds can be a bit tricky, the same as with pillows and blow up mattresses because Massachusetts uh, has very strict laws around um, donating, things like that. So 
you know, if, if they're the items, then put pink on them. And then basically, um, certainly the companies that we work with, the background checked, and I can speak to Tracy or Ellen or whoever you're working with. Um, but it, it really is sometimes good just to have photos of what I, and have a conversation with the company to say, these are absolute junk items. The other thing is Needham Yard Sale is one of the most used websites. And again, if you can get your realtor or somebody, Ellen, Tracy, to, to your home when they come or, or whoever, a friend, to be there, just somebody with you, whether it's going to be a Needham Yard Sale to pick it up or a junk removal company, but like to Ellen's point, the junk removal should always be your last option. But with material things, people can be a bit strange. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So when my parents, when I was trying to um, get rid of everything in their house about five years ago, they lived in Longmeadow, that's where I grew up in, in Massachusetts. So there were things that my father uh, had in his garage, don't ask me, there were just bricks <laughs> and there were just stuff. He was a little bit of a hoarder. So I put on, um, uh, what's it called, Craigslist, which I know that you have to also be careful with. Um, you don't want people coming. And then, you know, it, it, again, tends to be a situation. So if you do something like that, enlist one of your kids or a friend to, to be with you. But I put free. I mean, I'm not selling the bricks. I'm not selling the trash cans. And it, it was worth it for me to give the, the metal trash cans away and the heap of bricks and whatever other junk that was in the garage because otherwise I would have had to pay a junk man, like, like you've said, to come and get these things. So if okay. you, can, yeah. you know, think outside the box a little bit, this will save you money, which I was trying to save my parents um, the money to do that. So, um, oh, and then uh, someone just posted New Life Furniture Bank in Walpole and someone else asked what the website is. So if anybody knows the website for that, if they could put that in the chat, because I know a lot of people have big pieces of furniture that they're trying to yeah. give you know, to, to um, something. Can I also just jump in, Eve? Um, again, with my parents, there was um, an apartment full of furniture and uh, I didn't have any need for it. So um, we gave it to Hyas, uh, Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, which today uh, probably does not aid Jewish people anymore. There are very few Jewish refugees coming in that, at that kind of level. They're aiding people probably more from North Africa. And I, um, I contacted the Jewish Community Center in the Long Meadow area. So you can Google and look to see maybe Ellen or Eve, you know, if Pius is in the Boston area. Um, they came with a truck and they took away beautiful, I mean, it was beautiful furniture. Um, probably I could have sold it, but, uh, but I decided to do it this way. And we gave away a hutch and a dining table and all wood, all, all wood furniture, whole apartments full of furniture. And it makes me feel good that a family um, they they were resettling a family that a family is here with all that beautiful furniture that they oh. use. Um, so that's something that people also might want to think about. It's Hias H I A S. Hias is a wonderful organization. I encourage people to look them up and support them. The other thing I just say to the person who lives alone and isn't strong enough to move everything. Um, if you you obviously have to be careful who you let in your home these days, but um, if you if you are on my neighbor uh, or, or you belong to a synagogue, you might be able to, um, the office might be able to put a note in their newsletter. Um, there may, you know, I belong to the Newton Center Minion and people often post that they need help and they moving something from upstairs to downstairs. They say, you know, I'll pay you 15, I'll pay a strong teenager or college kid to come over here $15 um, to, to move this. Um, and, or you could try your local Boy Scout troop. There, there are a lot of, strong young people out there who are eager to have a chance to make some money. Um, so it's a win-win on both sides. Great, thanks everybody. The Newton Parent Association, also you can probably put something in there, um, you know, looking for teens. Just wanna be careful. If you've got something very valuable and you're hiring two 18 year old boys to carry it down and it breaks uh, versus right. you're just carrying a couple of kitchen chairs out, that's one thing. But if you've got something very, very valuable, then probably defer to someone like Eve who would know who should yeah. put that out. They should wrap it a certain way. If your house is really beautiful, you don't want them banging the walls while they're schlepping right. down the stairs. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> and, you know, uh, I don't want to then have to call the plasterer, right? 
<laughs> and if you need and one just, of those, I've got that detail as well <laughs> to fix the wall yeah. afterwards. That, that's, co that's common sense if you have a beautiful yeah. home or you have something valuable. The other thing I wanted to point out, um, because, uh, Tracy, I think you said there, there weren't a lot of Jewish refugees, but Hyas works internationally. And one of the places they work is in Israel where they are settling um, people who may not necessarily be Jewish, but um, refugees who are coming to Israel, some of whom already speak Hebrew, some of whom are coming and may learn Hebrew. Um, there are a lot of people um, in Israel who, who are refugees who need the help to asylum seekers. Well, that's great. Um, I've spoken to people about this and they said, oh, my parents were assisted by Hayes you know, 50 years ago or something like that. So, you know, it's a feel good, it's a feel good kind of thing. Um, any other questions? I think Nancy Sterling. Yeah. Nancy Sterling. Hello. Hi. Hopefully you can hear this, Nancy. Um, I just wanted to share some expertise on consignment stores. Um, I'm a consigner at three in the area, two are in Needham. They only take high-end designer items um, that are two years old or less. And I then did some research because that meant they did not take a lot of things that were perfectly nice and usable. And I went to um, a consignment store in Maynard called Raspberry Beret. And I've been three times and they've taken the vast majority of my stuff. So it really pays to look around and find a consignment store that might take things. Also right now, um, they are not taking formal work clothes like suits because those of us who wear suits normally aren't wearing them and same thing for eve evening clothes so i just think it's good to manage people's expectations before they you know go through all that effort as i did getting the clothes clean and ready and on hangers and right. them in, having to take them back out again um if you kind of know what you're going to have in advance i ended up in the last year donating 14 bags of clothes because consignment stores would not take them and nancy where did you donate them to so um two stores where i'm a consigner uh, where i donated to was savers um there's one in west roxbury and one yeah. in norwood that are closest to me also one in framingham yeah and I think, you know, there are, I think Nancy Rose is an excellent point. And I think that everybody has, has been through this. You're not going to be the first, you know, group of people going through this, that it's so important because we could talk for another three hours. I kid you not. Um, and so you, I, I think, think I'm going to have you back at some point. So, right. <laughs> I but, but I think it's important that we break it down like you're doing with the jewelry. I think things like that, where it has the dollar amount and also, you know, estate sales and consignment. But the, the bottom line is make a plan. And if, you know, if Nancy here has, you know, imparted this information about consignment, reach out to Nancy. We, we've got to help each other because the, the, the thing that scares me most about this and the thing that I love that Ellen and Tracy are doing is that people take advantage. And, you know, that really, it, I, I just, it, it really upsets me. And I think that I would rather, and everybody on here would rather help each other than allow somebody to take advantage. Because these are things that you had a past with. Everything in your home now, whatever you look at, it's your choice where it goes. It's your past. Yes, we're living in the, the present, we're living in now, but it doesn't mean to say we're not in control just because we're overwhelmed. We need to have a plan so we take control of the situation. So we don't allow people to, to come in and take advantage of what we're doing. Um, so and that is so important. So please reach out to Ellen, reach out to Tracy, reach out to me. I know, Deb, you're going to be up next week. You know, we're here as a team. It's really, really, really important. And if you take one thing away from today, or two things, always underscore who's coming into your home, who you're going to be helping, and just don't assume they know more than you because all of us on this group could really show people a thing or two. Tracy, Tracy, yes. me, Esther. Yes, hi, Esther. Way, is there a way that you can concise all the information so people can go? Because I looked at, on so many web pages and I'm completely confused. 
each time I get more confused than I was before. So if somebody can concise that and bring it to a place where people can go and click like Nancy said, or Eve said, so people can go into it and be helpful. I, I, can I just say that Tracy, because I think that what I found on Tracy's website was, you know, for, for your temple was really, really useful. I think what would really help because the list is not exhaustive. There's so much information. So I think it's really the question that will lead to the answer. I think that if there are consignment clothes, then I think it would be, we can definitely answer that. And, but it really depends what you're looking to, to, to downsize. But yes, if there's any information that I can give to you, Tracy, that you can put on the, on and from Nancy as well, from who's, who's worked with the consignment stores. I might call you, Eve. I might call you because there are things that I have in my mind that I don't think it should be discussed on there. Uh, okay, that's fine too. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Of course. We finish. I'll, I'll Sean will give me a minute, and I'll write down um, the thing, the uh, list that people wrote here. So if anyone has any questions, um, yeah, definitely email me, and I'll I'll have that list that I'll write down. So Sean, when we're done, if you can just give me a second to write down some of the websites. Sure. I know we have that training soon, or now actually, Tracy. So. Okay. All right. So we're probably going to have to wrap this up. Um, Eve, this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, oh, I, yeah. I will take a minute after we click on goodbye and I will just look at um, what the websites were and if anyone has a question about it you can just email me and I'll, and I'll write it to you and Eve's, um, Eve's information is in the chat as well and if you did not get that, oh yeah I just put my number here but yeah. um yes absolutely we're we could as I said we could talk forever because there's you know there is really uh, there is oh um, well, thank you so much. This was wonderful. I, I, again, I think this is um, probably a, a program that we could continue another time and go on and on because it, everyone has different information to share. Um, like you said, different websites to share and all of that. So Ellen, thank oh. you for bringing Eve to us. I really appreciate it. This was fabulous. And Eve, thank you so much for-, for Oh, Tracy, my Deb, pleasure. Deb is on the call. Deb is going to- uh, be talking to us next week about home home decor and staging and I know even if you're not moving uh, I'm not moving but it's just interesting to know what the trends are I have a neighbor who just redid her whole kitchen living room and I see it's very Manhattan you know type um, you know very uh, not tchotchkes tchotchkes are out but my house is full of tchotchkes <laughs> so I see the different you know the different designs so I think we're all interested to see what the new designs are and obviously if you're moving, um, what to get rid of and then how to just make it so that, you know, if you have a couch or have a table, it looks, it looks like someone's still living there but not full of stuff. So I'm sure Deb is going to talk about that next week. So okay. stay tuned. Uh, this Thursday, we have Zumba at one and we have Artful Afternoons at two and we have Michelle Maram speaking about the art of George Surratt. And I will send an email out probably tomorrow morning so that you will have the link for Thursday. Thank you, thank you, everybody. This was fabulous. Thank you, Ellen, for sponsoring. And thank you, Eve. This was really, really helpful. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.